Hello everyone and welcome to Dominate Dominion number 104. Excuse me real quick while my client has some problems with the setup. There we go. Should be good now. We are getting into round one. It is going to be Pandrinos versus Prasians. It's going to tongue tie me a little bit in the game, but we'll get this thing rocking. Let me get our chat bands updated for you guys. The chat bands are going to be Kazix, Ramis, Hecarim, and Kassadin. And it looks like we are also going to be having Nidalee and Pantheon banned out. Nidalee being super, super strong with her poke and able to just solely defend a point completely by herself. Very frustrating to deal with. Running through the jungle, eating a spear to the face is not very fun. So you want to get that out of there as fast as possible. And then Pantheon, he's got that global presence, he's got that strong map control, he's always a very strong bruiser pick for this map. And then we have the Vi being banned out as well. And Vi, one of the top bruisers on the map currently. So Vi is a very, very strong pick, very good to get her off the table. Coming out from Purple Team's bands, we do have Heimerdinger, very strong force to contend with bot lane. He can just sit there and sit there, and then he'll sit there some more because, you know, that's just what he does. And then Evelyn being banned out, she's very good at ganking bot, as well as being a strong bot laner herself. She can dual 1v1 very well, and you just never see that gank coming. Jax being banned out, very strong bot laner. We see Sam use him quite a bit, one of the top team's 3v3 GG guys, and uh, as well as Sauron, so you want to get him out of the picture too. So, for our picks coming out from Blue Team, they do pick up that Wukong. Wukong having that great initiate with his E and ultimate, knocking up the entire team. He's got massive armor shred on that Q, able to uh, fight 1v1 and win duels 2v2, 3v3 pretty well. And uh, let's see what Purple Team's going to pick. It looks like they're going for the Xin Shao. Possibly going to be picking up the... Well, they do have the Sona locked in. Sona is... Not as much played support-wise lately, but we do have some very strong Sona players that uh, still tend to like her quite a bit. And it looks like the Xin Chao is going to be locked in. He is going to be able to jump in there. He does have that armor pen on his challenge with the massive knockback, which is actually really good against the Wukong. If Wukong tries to go in, Xin Chao pops that ult, knocks him right away. Nothing can be done. And let's see how Pandrinos decides to respond to this with their picks. I believe Teemo is still open up on the table, as well as LeBlanc, Talon, Maokai. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff open this time. So we're going to have to see what they decide to pick here in this next round of picks. And I didn't get a chance to introduce myself because... I kind of had to jump right into this, but my name is Fancy Wolf. Many of you guys know me from over on my stream, and I'm going to be your solo caster today. My uh, my casting buddy, Rando Carizian, kind of betrayed me, and he, he ran away, so I don't really have a casting buddy. Damn Rando, I shouldn't have trusted him. Alright, and it looks like we are going to have legit pillow pet locking in that Karma. Karma, ever since her rework, has been quite the force. She is able to get that AP and massively blow up teams with her crazy amount of damage from that Mantra Q. And then we're also going to have that Maokai locked in. Maokai is a really, really strong tank in Dominion. He can build his defenses. He can have that ultimate up. It cuts all of the enemy team's damage by 25%. So AoE damage becomes almost mute when you have a Maokai on the enemy team. So... Frasians is going to have to be really careful about how they pick their comp now. They don't want to go for that AoE damage with that Maokai showing on the table. And it looks like the Cho'Goth is going to be locked in. Don't see too many Cho'Goths, but he's still a pretty decent pick. Bot lane, he can turn into an unstoppable tank. He can just sit there and get that chomp going, get that massive HP spike, and he'll sit there and just zone and heal up. And it looks like the Jace is going to be locked in as the final pick, was not banned, is going to get picked up. Now, we'll see if this Jace decides to go for a more bruisery build, or if he decides to go for the 80 carry, hard carry Jace with the Infinity Edge build. It's very well known in Dominion as being an incredibly strong build, able to three-shot people with that hashtag blat blat blat. And we'll see how Pandrinos reacts to this. It looks like they're going to be picking up that Urgot. And Urgot is always a great pickup here. He could go top or bot lane, but I, I think he's probably going to be bot lane looking at the top lane team comp right now. They do have a pretty solid pickup with that LeBlanc being locked in. 
LeBlanc being one of the strongest assassins on the map right now, once she gets that BFT, nothing is safe. She will guaranteed kill one target. And then it looks like... Pretty sure that Urgot is going to be locked in. He will be going bot lane. And uh, bot lane Urgot is a true terror. He's able to just sit back. If he lands one Acid Hunter on you, he just lets the Qs start flying. And then, as uh, similarly he, to SR, he does not actually have Mana Trouble on Dominion. It's still somewhat apparent, as if you're spamming abilities like crazy, he will go Oom. But um, because Dominion has a built-in Chalice, he actually will not run out of mana as fast as he does on Summoner's Rift. And it looks like we're going to have the Lissandra picked up. As the last pick here, I'm not actually sure who is going to go bot lane for Prasians, because Prasians does have a Cho'Goth, who's a great bot laner. Bot lane Jace is also a very strong pick. Oh, and the switch into the Galio might also be bot lane. He's very, very good against AP bots, but with Urgot bot, he might have a little bit more trouble. Urgot does have a lot of ticking damage with his Corrosive Charge and Acid Hunters getting hit multiple times. That'll allow Galio Shield to heal him up quite a bit. Or we're going to go with Cassiopeia, because I'm just going to wait until they actually lock in before I start talking about the champs. But let's see. I think we are... No, he's going to go to the Galio. Alright, so that is going to be a very interesting bot lane matchup there. It's going to be the Urgot versus Galio, I'm assuming. We'll see if they try to pull something on me here and swap it up a little bit. So... Champion swaps are coming in, and we are going to get loaded in this game in a bit. We have the countdown going. All right. Oh, and actually there was some summoner spell swapping going on on the uh, Prasians team here. I, I can't talk about it yet because we're not fully into the game, but as soon as we are into the game, you'll be able to see there was a, uh, a lack of green spells, and then suddenly there were quite a few green spells. All right, and it looks like, you know, I really think blue team is going to have a really powerful team fight with this. They do have the Maokai. That'll cut a lot of damage down. They do have the Karma for the shields and the massive damage off Q. They have a little Blanc for singling out a target and blowing them up, and they do have the Wukong to help with the Maokai going in. The downside to that is there is a Xinxiao on the enemy team. If they try to engage too hard, he can just ult, knock them all back, and then they do have Sona as well. And Sona is really, really good at counter-engaging. So she will be able to knock them back pretty easily there. And where are my no blockers? There we go. All right. So the timer has counted down, and we are able to show the summoner spells now. We do have a lot of revives now on Prasians, except for Sona going for uh, the ghost and the flash. Not a bad idea. Going classic z Mike style, trying to play back, play safe, just support the team. And it looks like Pandrinos is going with a bit more standard Dominion picks. They do have those Ignites. There is a heal being brought in. The heal changes are uh, very, very strong. So that is actually a pretty good spell to bring along with you. And it looks like Lilms is going to be bringing that Flash on Urgot, probably, to chase in with those Acid Hunters and polish off the kill. But we do see a lot of Ghosts coming out from Purple Team. They're probably going to be looking to uh, try to get some good map position with that. Ghost isn't normally favored by top players because there are speed shrines around the map, and it does force you to kind of hit that soft cap of move speed. But we'll see what happens there. Maybe the ghost will pay off, maybe they can use them in the right situations and get some good plays going. And yes, I am Fancy Wolf. I will be your caster for today. As I said earlier, my uh, my caster buddy, Rando Carizian, completely um, betrayed me. He left. He said, I'll be there to cast with you, bro, and then he totally bailed on me. I was I was so hurt. It was it was very painful. <clears throat> Alright. So yeah, and actually for this first match, there's a lot of revives. Normally in our round one matches we have the newer teams coming in and they don't really know of the Dominion meta, so they don't think of revive as a spell. And you'll see, like, maybe one or two here or there, and both teams having a bunch of flashes and ghosts. But actually, every almost every player in the game has revived. This is really, really, really... I'm, I'm impressed. I'm excited. I actually see lots of revives. And Corval, no one was going to cast with me. I, I was trying to find someone, and I was like, I can't find someone. It's all good. I'll solo cast it. I got this. Turn on the man mode. All right, we are about 40 seconds from getting into this game here. 
<clears throat> and I'm pretty sure it is going to be the Urgot versus the Galio bot lane. That is going to be an interesting matchup, because Galio is normally a good counter pick against the MR champions bot, or uh, Magic champions bot, but Urgot has a lot of AD, and he's going to be forced to build armor against it, and if he does that, he's not going to be able to get his bonus AP from his passive. So we will actually see what happens here. And I actually think you need co-caster. Yeah, now everyone's going to message me and be like, oh man, co-casters, cool. But uh, yeah, I'll probably pull you in silent as soon as this game is over. Let me make sure, was this my loading screen? Got to double check. All right, we're loading into the game now. We are going to get this rocking. Is going to be round one. That is not my loading screen. We'll just go right to the end game. All right, your team on the right is going to be Prazens. And your team on the left is going to be... Oh, I swapped them up because of the finals. GG. And your team on the left is going to be Pandrinos. Returning team to Dominate Dominion. They've been here quite a few times. Rocking had some pretty good showings. So uh, we'll see if they can pull something out here. Rocking and rolling this first round. Uh, you guys and your big, huge team names. All right. <clears throat> and we're almost always almost 100% loaded into the game here, but it seems Galio is having a bit of a loading problem there. And uh <laughs> for the Pandrinos, we do have Lilums playing that Urgot and we do have legit pillow pet playing Karma. Lose all day on the Maokai. Saddam Hussein is playing LeBlanc and not Ziggs. I'm very disappointed in that. Trayvon Martin is playing that Wukong. And over for Prasians, we have Al Max on Cho'Goth. John Lee on Zin Shao. Per Fat Man. Pierre Fat Man. Per Fat Man. Per Fat Man is on that Jace. Guest is on that Sona. And we have. Flickering Light on Galio. So we'll see if Prasians can go against this team who has been playing in Dominion tournaments for quite a while. See if they can pull out this win from under their belt, but we will see. It's Padrinos. Ah, thank you for informing me. I will fix that. I always call them Pandarinos or Panda Dominoes. All right, there we go. And we are loaded in this game here. And let's see, check our items here coming out. We do have some pretty standard stuff coming out from Pandrinos. All Prospector's items, all the time. That's how we Dominion, we get those good, good early game starts. And uh, looking over on Prasons, they do have... Oh, I gotta turn off my chat. Ah. Alright. Looking over on Prasons, we do have the Cho'Goth. He is going to be going bot with that Cho'Goth. So he's going to be rocking that. He does have a Catalyst start. Probably going to build that into Rod of Ages. Zinchao going for the Phage. Wants to stick to the targets and make sure he gets that extra move speed off of the proc. Jace actually going tier. That is going to hurt their early game quite a bit, but if he can get to that Muramana, then it will be much, much stronger. Sona starting with the Prospector's Blade and some regen, always good. And Galio starting with a Chalice, probably going to be building that into Athenes. And for Padrinos, it's actually going to be LeBlanc bot lane. So that is going to be a very interesting matchup, Cho'Goth versus LeBlanc. He does have that Silence and the Chomp and can get some good damage on, but that does require him to land that Rupture as well. So we'll see what happens there. Gonna have Wukong and Zin Shao capping the midpoints, making sure they hang back. And let's see what they can do here. The Jace Cannon coming out does not hit that hard. I think he only has one rank into that Q. 
And the poke wars have begun as they fight over this windmill here. The other two are coming up to join them, and oof, Galio taking a lot of damage, as is Sona going really, really low. That Sona needs to be careful she doesn't have revive. If she gets caught out and blown up, her team is going to be down a man for the rest of the windmill fight. And oh man, the poke is so real coming out here from Pedrinos. They have got some good damage going down. Getting excellent poke and keeping themselves back, trying not to take too much damage. Uh, not popping their health pots, although they can. Zinshao grabbing that relic. And oh, this Karma poke is so real. It is dealing so much damage right now. And it looks like they may be able to get this point. It's halfway capped for Pendrinos right now. And Urgot landing that corrosive charge. Who is he going to start focusing down? He's going for the Galio, but the Zinshao jumps onto him. The flash away, very nicely done. The engage happens. Galio locking down. Locking down that JC is going to be able to blow up him because he does have that tier. Wukong trying to jump back in, get some damage down. Sona has Ignite. She will be fine. And Urgot still alive. He ran back to get that health relic and is coming back in. Karma coming up with the plays. Still getting there. And they will be able to take all the fights. The revives are being popped, but that windmill is so far gone, I don't think it's going to matter. Meanwhile, in bot lane, Cho'Gath and LeBlanc tussling it out a little bit. LeBlanc has a pretty good push going on this Cho'Gath here. Pendrinos did get the top lane, and they did manage to force almost every revive out of that too, so that is going to be a pretty big mess there for Prasians. And it looks like Jace getting a little bit caught out in the enemy's jungle here, trying to get some jungle control, but he should be fine. He didn't take too much damage from that. Xinxiao was able to collect the relic in the meantime, so that is going to be a dangerous Xinxiao to try and fight. That magic damage proc blowing up on him. And, ooh, that karma damage on the Jace and the second effect completely blowing him up. And it looks like Prazins is going to try to push onto this as hard as they can. Karma getting taken really low, but she does still have her revive, so she will be able to get back up here. She does pop it. She's coming back up. Wukong did just hit six. He may try to pop his ult right here, but that Xinxiao is super scary. Probably going to be able to kill him, no problem. If Maokai can get the save, he does not, but he does get the root. Karma's on her way back up. And meanwhile in the bot lane, just some tussling going on. And back up top here. The Maokai ult is down. Xinxiao's trying to get in and get some damage. The Sona ult comes through. Maokai's trying to cling on with everything he can, but he is going to go down as well. And Karma should wisely back off of this because that is a 4v1. Although she's still just trying to get that extra damage down. Red team has captured the wind. And the Xinxiao walking into the jungle finding a Karma and is actually going to get blown up. So a little bit, uh, need to be a bit more weary on that map map vision when he's uh, walking into the enemy jungle with everyone popping revives and being up and it looks like they are going to be able to try to push onto this it is currently a 3v3 but karma is very low i don't know if she's gonna be able to survive too much more she might just back out completely ergot trying to get those acid hunters down he does also have the storm relic so he's getting some extra da extra damage down on that and ergot just sitting here being a pestering bully oh the map <laughs> Galio ult coming down, and it actually does finish off the Urgot. But Maokai ult coming down, blowing up the rest, and Wukong popping that ult on one person to finish off on Sona. <clears throat> and Zichao coming back up. He's going to try to get this tower, and Wukong taking a lot of damage from the tower does get poked down. Let's see if Karma and Maokai can get this down. They still have six seconds before the enemy team is back up. Are they going to be able to get him? That Karma damage is strong. Maokai's jumping on. They are swapping the turret. That was very nicely done, having Maokai hold it while Karma did some damage, and then swapping the cap as soon as Karma took some damage. That was very nicely done by Pedrinos. And meanwhile in bot lane, it's just gonna look, looking like a farm lane. You got that Cho'Gath able to sit on point and wave clear so fast. And ooh, Karma walking in the jungle, running into a Galio and Sona, probably going to go down if Sona can get off one more Q. Don't think she's going to be able to get it off in time. Ooh, the Whirlwind almost taking her down, but Galio also getting dangerously low. So let's see if they're going to be able to do anything with this. Karma is very low, but so is Galio, and Urgot now is below half too. Xinxiao is on his way up, but so is Wukong there, pushing the minions up, going to try to take the point. And meanwhile back in bot, still a lot of nonsense. Xinxiao actually opting to probably go for a back cap. It doesn't seem like he, he knows his team is going to have some trouble diving this point, because that is a Maokai. Diving the Maokai on point is very difficult. Oh, and they do actually manage to get the Urgot down. And with that, they are going to be able to push onto this with Xinxiao capping the back. It was a very wise play there. Maokai is going down to stop him, but now Karma and Wukong are holding this 2v3. That is going to be very difficult to do. There's a lot of poke coming out from Prasons right now, and Xinxiao... 
showing Maokai what's good and giving him some good damage. And the shield comes out from Karma will keep the Wukong alive for just a second or two longer. But the Galio does not go down, is going to be able to cap this point with Sona. And meanwhile, Xin Shao did manage to kill Maokai over at that midpoint. So Xin Shao will be able to take that mid. Looks like Urgot trying to get in there, get some good poke down on him. Maybe. No, Xin Shao's going right in. He says, you know what? I'm not scared of you, Urgot. I got this. Let's go, man. I see that Ninja Tabby. And I will raise you my awesome stuff. But LeBlanc saying, dude, that's my friend. Get off. Coming up from bot lane, giving a bit of help. Showing that roaming bot laners do exist, and they're very, very helpful. All right, Praise and Sona sitting up on the point instead of getting jungle control. Not uh, the best advice, but she is just going B, probably just trying to make sure no one was getting, uh, no one was instantly going to pressure that top there. And it looks like ooh, Kappa is going to get halfway. Karma missing that mantra Q. Not too big of a deal. Mantra's on a pretty short cooldown. She will be able to get it back up soon. Jace does have that shield, so he's going to be shooting. Oh, the four-man Galio ult. That is going to be a lot of damage coming out. Wukong tries the ult to get some damage back in there. Sona is just running through, going so ham. She is going to go down, but so is Wukong. And Urgot also fell in that combat. Oh, and Xinxiao meeting up with Karma saying, you ain't going anywhere. This is going to be our mid. And Praisen's doing some amazing work here as they're pushing on to the midpoint. LeBlanc is roaming up from bot lane. She's going to try to make a kill happen here. She does go onto the Galio, but instantly gets blown up. That Xin Xiao and Galio damage was just too much for her. The point did get neutralized, so Maokai is going to have to run away from this. Oh, Maokai, you are very brave. Oh, that whirlwind almost hit him. And they are going to be able to finish off this Xin Xiao pretty easily, that Galio shield, keeping him alive for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, in bot lane, the point did get neutralized. Strogoth did take advantage of LeBlanc roaming top, got the point neutralized, and now he's just going to pester her as much as he can, keeping her from getting that back. And top lane, they're actually trying to get this point back as fast as possible, because uh, reinforcements are on the way for both teams. Zinchao's still dead for seven seconds, but Jace can get up there and give them a hand. Let's see if they're going to be able to make anything happen here. Urgot going in hard with the switch. The tower is going to be able to kill him with the combined damage from the champs, though. And it looks like Jace is back up here to the fight. And ooh, that tower dive was very, very risky. And I don't know if Karma's going to be able to make it out of this one alive. The Jace swaps the forms there, finishing her off. And Maokai is just going to try to run, but he is running right into a Zin Xiao. And he is going to go down as well. Oh, man. It's looking pretty uh, pretty bleak for the Padrinos right now. They need to be really careful. They're trying to get it, and oh, the BFT into the chains will finish off the Cho'Gath. LeBlanc will finally be able to get that bot lane back. Very nicely done. Blue team has captured the quarry. All right, and let's see. Padrinos really need to just try to go for mid. They keep really pressuring this top lane so hard, and the team fight is very difficult against this Galio landing those ults, the Sona landing the ults, and they have the Jace sitting safe in the back line just pumping out the damage. So, we'll see if they can get anything done with this here. Or they just, you know, could gank bot. Granted, it is a Cho'Gath, but enough damage will bring him down. He is just very healthy right now. They send down Wukong or something, or even Urgot, to try and take him out. And they're just, they're probably going to go for the four-man dive here. They're trying to get the damage down. Xin Xiao taken really low. He's got that Acid Hunter uh, blown up on him. And Galio also getting taken down immediately. LeBlanc said, you know what, guys? I know you're having trouble top. We're just going to 5v4 this, and we're going to take it back. Wukong trying to go in on the Jace, seeing if he can get him. He's so close. The E is about to come back up for Wukong. He is going to be able to get it, and down he goes. So they will be able to get that top point back. LeBlanc is going to have to do this dance again with the Cho'Gath one more time to get the point back. But she might have reinforcements here in a second. Meanwhile, while Bot is neutralized, they are pressuring mid incredibly hard. They will be able to get the nuke, so it'll be a 2-1. to one. And Prajans will actually start to lose some points here. Karma coming down, saying, don't worry, LeBlanc, I got you. Getting some really good damage onto that Cho'Gath, even with a Negatron Cloak. Just goes to show you how strong that AP Karma actually is. So now she's going to pressure that bot lane, running over there as fast as she can while her team was still pressuring mid. Jace is coming down to cover. And looks like Prajans is going to try to make a push for top. They know that there's only two people up here. They don't know if anyone else is waiting in the jungle, though. But now they do see Urgot revealed himself bot lane, and they are going as hard as they can on this. It is the quest. If they can get this, that'll be 20 points off the Nexus and the damage boost. 
Zen Shao and Cho'Goth are coming down to try and reinforce this, though, but it is going to be a 3v2. Don't know if they're going to be able to hold it off, but they do manage to take down the Urgot. Oh, and LeBlanc taking too much tower damage, getting knocked up and silenced, completely blown up here. And it looks like Wukong did go down in the top lane fight, and Maokai just trying to hold this out. He is a Maokai on point, which is very difficult to contend with. He does get lots of heals from all this casting, though, and he is actually going to go down. And oh my goodness, Karma did actually go down to Cho'Gath down there. That was an ace from Praisins. They are maybe going to be... No, the revives are coming out. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, you take revive on Dominion. It allows you to get back up. It allows you to make those plays. And look at this, Karma. The base were so real said, my LeBlanc is on the way. She's got my back. We've got this fight. And now back up top lane. They're trying to make a play. They're trying to get in on this Jace and Galio. They should know that revive timers are actually going to be coming back up for the other team as well. So they're going to be trying to get this point on lockdown as fast as possible. Maokai going in along with the Urgot. They are going to be able to maybe finish off this Galio super fast. Sona's coming in trying to get some damage as well. But Jace is just going to be a headache and a half. Hitting that Maokai under the tower. Maokai does have tower aggro, which is good. No, now it's on to Urgot. But they are swap channeling very, very well. Making sure the tower is getting the least amount of hits out. And Karma... Being like, what's up, Sinchao? I'm just going to keep you here for a second. I'm going to try to walk away, but there is a Galio there. The knockup coming from Sinchao. Is the Maokai going to be able to save her? I think so. Oh, so close, but the Galio Q comes out and polishes her off. And it looks like, oh man, this Galio with the snipes. He is just dropping these Qs on people and blowing them up. But I think, oh, Bukong almost getting taken out, but the Galio does finally go down. And LeBlanc just trying to run around in circles on this Cho'Goth here, get some damage down on him. She did pop that BFT. It's going to be up for a few more seconds. She may go in and try to finish off that kill. And Wukong's still sitting at, like, zero HP. I'm, I'm actually very curious to what you were at, my friend. Where did you go? Uh, he's sitting at 71 right now, so I'm sure he was probably sitting at, like, 10 when he got taken that low. And Maokai trying to hold this point off as long as he can for his team, but it is not going to happen. That is a 2v1 with a Jace. Does not quite have Muramana yet. Once he gets that, his damage will spike incredibly. But Urgot is up here now. He has that Storm Shield. He's going to be able to get down a lot of damage. He is just face tanking this Jace and says, you know what, I really don't care, Jace. And oh, almost, but the Corrosive Charge will finish him off. That Galio coming out and dealing a lot of damage. He does flash away. Camera, please, we don't care about Maokai going down. And he will actually end up going down. And chasing on to this Galio, trying to get some damage, but the Xinxiao is on the Karma, able to take her down with ease. Wukong trying to get in on this Xinxiao, but Wukong, that is a Xinxiao that you were trying to fight. He does pop his ult, he will be able to get it. Watch out for that Galio, he's got the Q snipes for days. And Wukong again, living with just no HP. Coming so close. Meanwhile, in bot lane, it looks like the Cho'Goth and the LeBlanc are still just chilling and farming. Cho'Goth actually picking up that Abyssal Scepter, not too bad of a pickup. It will lower the MR of LeBlanc when she tries to come in, allowing them to get a little bit more damage off. And a very good read there by Cho'Goth. He figured LeBlanc was going to be instantly started pressuring the tower, but then backed off. And Praisins do have some good pressure on this top point. The minions are going to neutralize it if something is done here. Oh, very nice save by the Maokai there, so making sure no one else could channel. He is very, very low, and he is trying to back out of that. Jace has finished his Muramana, so that damage spike is there. But we'll, we'll see if he can capitalize on it. They do not have Galio ult, and Sona ult will be up momentarily. So they can't really have any form of counter engage or engage right now. Xinxiao trying to loop around the back and get that back half again, but Karma is waiting. She said, you know what? Totally knew you were going to do this, so I'm ready for you. Meanwhile, back up top, Wukong taking a lot of damage, trying to go in and get poke and come back out, but he does not manage to get anything done. The revive comes out. He will be back up as fast as he can. Maokai just trying to hold on, doesn't get too much damage down but is able to stall him for a few seconds. The tower is neutralized and will go back to Praisins. And this Zin Xiao is on fire. He is going absolutely crazy, blowing up that Karma. And it looks like, will LeBlanc be able to take down this Cho'Goth? I don't know. Meanwhile, up here, Wukong getting a little caught out. His team is not around. The Jace with that Muramana getting the damage down. And oh, it looks like bot lane LeBlanc didn't manage to kill the Cho'Goth. Very nicely done. That Cho'Goth, mind you, does have all the MR in the world. And both the Galio ult and Stone ult coming out. That is going to be way too much lockdown for Pedrinos to handle right now. They are going to get completely blown up here. And this midpoint may get neutralized. Oh, but the Karma Q coming out. The tower is going to start dropping damage onto them. 
and it looks like they should be okay. I don't think Karma can get back in there with the Xin Shao sitting in front. Alright, and they are going for that midpoint. The Wukong ult does come out. Galio does pop that Wooglitz. He is able to stay alive for just a few seconds longer. I don't know if they're going to be able to close out that kill on him. And Gal Maokai, Maokai, come back! Wukong needs your help! Wukong does go down, but Karma manages to clean up the kill on Xin Shao. Maokai, taken off, does manage to finish off the Galio, is going to go for the top point. Wukong on that 14 second timer. The rest of the team is going to be up in six. We'll be able to get this fully capped, no problem. There are no revives coming out. But they do have quite a bit of speed boost with the Galio and the Jace and the Sona. So we'll see if they can get up there to contest anything else in time. It looks like Karma is actually coming down to this bot lane to maybe try and gank. Cho'Goth is very low. She sees the opportunity to snipe him and try to go for this bot point. Meanwhile, Urgot getting a little caught out. He is all by himself. Maokai is up on the point still. Not getting that jungle control. Uh, it's very, very important. You need to make sure you do that. And Maokai just trying to do the best he can and hold on, but he is going to go down. Karma blowing up that Sona, the BFT, and second proc from the Q coming out. And now she's going to have to deal with the Xin Shao, but Wukong is here to try to give a hand. Let's see if they're going to be able to take him down. Karma it may go down. Yes, she did not have her Mantra W for the massive health boost. LeBlanc does manage to kill Cho'Goth in the bot lane, though, and bot lane again is Quest. She is going to be able to get that as well as get the 20 points and damage boost for her team. But right now, everyone is going to try to head B to stop this. That point cap is going to happen, though. It's 20 points off the Nexus health, as well as the damage boost for Pandrinos. Let's see if they can use this effectively. And Urgot trying to tango with this Galio here, but he's got a lot of HP and MR. Not quite doing super well with it. And LeBlanc, very wise. Ooh, what are you doing, LeBlanc? There's, there's people there. You might want to leave now. Andrinos needs to go capitalize on top lane. Oh, but the LeBlanc, oh my gosh, the damage is so real. She literally just popped that Xin Shao. That was quite an explosion of damage right there. He went from 90% to nothing instantly. But meanwhile, top lane, the Wukong is coming in. He does have the ultimate with the Maokai here. They are going to be able to finish off this Sona and cap this point. Oh, the Sona will come down. I think that missed. And they will be able to get this top lane, no problem. Meanwhile, the LeBlanc is just being the most annoying thing that you could imagine. Oh, the Chomp comes out and nearly kills her. Oh, this is way too close. Oh, no, LeBlanc, you get in there. You be a man. Finish this off. Come on. I believe in you. Do it. Do it. No, no. Is she going to do it? That is the question. She's, she's, she's trying. She's really trying. Oh, Chogoth is going to get the health relic. That's going to be different. And the ghost is popped. He's coming in. The ignite goes down. But no Q comes out. What is going to happen here? This this bot lane is so intense right now. Like, this is... this is Like, someone needs to make a move. Meanwhile, over here, we do have the Galio and the Xin Chao coming to cap bot. Because Pandrinos is all standing up top. That is why you don't stand in vision. Because you tell the enemy team, hey, go ahead and cap my bot lane point. Because we're not going to make it down there in time. And Cho'Goth did manage to get the capture back. LeBlanc was unable to finish him off. Is she going to use the double mimic? No, she's going to walk right into the silence and get blown up. All right, it looks like they are going to try to capture this midpoint here. Pandrinos needs to get something done quick. That Xin Shao is going to cap the back point. But Karma is there to stop him and slow him down a bit. Galio is on his way up. He does have ultimate. So if he gets into the fight here, this is going to be a problem. He does get the ult down onto the Maokai. That is going to blow him up. And now Urgot is all by himself in this 4v1. He is going to go down. And Pendrinos does not have revives. Karma, the only one with revive up right now. She is going to try to fight this Xin Shao again. But that Xin Shao just has so much damage. Oh, man. He does actually have Entropy. I, I noticed he had a red buff there, and I was like, red buff doesn't exist on Dominion. But yeah, uh, he did pick up that Entropy, not normally picked up, but it's paying off for him, so it seems to be working right now. And Prasians is going to cap that top point. So we are 54 to 82 right now. The game is coming down to the wire. LeBlanc needs to make a play bot or roam top and try to get something done. Pandrinos needs to get a good catch on the enemy jungle somewhere. Let's see what they can do. They're running up this top point. Urgot catching that Storm Relic. And let's see if they're going to be able to do something about this. Maokai going to farm some minions. Trying to get that wave pushed up. They're running out of time. They need to make a play quick. The timer is ticking down. The BFT going down on the Cho'Goth. The LeBlanc burst coming through. Backs off. Doesn't quite go in for the full thing. 
And the poke is coming out from Pendrinos. They got a lot of damage. Galio is not up, and neither is Sona Ult. So their two major playmakers are out of the picture for this. Sona Ult just came back up. But man, look at this move speed. That Jace Gate moving them around everywhere. Oh, and the Zinchao's going in. He's getting some good damage onto the Maokai. The Sona Ult does come through. Wukong Ult used on the Sona. Galio Ult is up right now as well. They wisely waited until the Wukong ult had knocked him up before popping it. I don't know if Ergot's going to be able to live through this. That is a Muramana Jace and a Galio that is beating on him, and he does go down as well. LeBlanc running up top, trying to make a last-second play to get something done, but she has no health either. I think she was just coming up here to try and kill some people before the game ended. Oh, the Wooglets! Shut down Jace. That is not happening. Misses the Q and does not quite manage to finish him off, and I think that is going to be GG. So they are going to be able to polish off that Jace, but bot lane is about to get neutralized by these minions, and top lane is not going to be capped in time. Very well played. Very, very well played by Prazens. Brand new team. I don't recognize them. If they were here last week when I was gone, uh, they managed to beat Pandrinos, and Pandrinos has been quite a Dominion team for some time now, so very nicely done. Excellent job to them. All right, and let's get into this post-game screen here. Make sure my shortcuts are all good. And yeah, wow, what a game. That was round one. I, I honestly hope the rest of our matches are like that. Normally round ones are just complete stomps, but they, they managed to rock that incredibly well. And let's check out our damage delta champions here. Some pretty even numbers coming out from Pedrinos. And that Jace, once he got that Muramana finish, he was blowing up teams. And then the uh, Xin Shao had quite a a little weird build with that Entropy and the Zephyr, but still managed to put out the damage for his team. Very nicely done. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we will be back, and we will get into Game 2 of Dominate Dominion number 104.